Well, what does the future hold for Defense Secretary Mark Esper? That's the question tonight. Esper today undermining the Commander-in-Chief on National Security. Take a look and a listen to what the Defense Secretary today said. The option to use active duty forces in a law enforcement role should only be used as a matter of last resort and only in the most urgent and dire of situations. We are not in one of those situations now. I do not support invoking the Insurrection Act. The defense secretary also telling NBC News last night he didn't know where he was going when he walked with the president to St. John's Church Monday evening with the president. But today he backtracked, saying he did know he was where he was going, but he didn't know what was going to happen when he got there uh, and styled it again as a photo opportunity. Unbelievable. Joining me tonight is KT McFarlane, former Deputy National Security Advisor to President Trump, author of the new book, Revolution, Trump, Washington, and We the People. KT, the president is having a little trouble with defense secretaries. I do not understand why the defense establishment, the, the military in this country, doesn't understand the chain of the command and propriety of uh, their comments in public. Your thoughts? You know, there, there are really two big problems here. One, the Secretary of Defense, this is not his choice whether to invoke the Insurrection Act. That's the President's choice. His job as Secretary of Defense is to give his best advice to the President in private. The President takes that advice or rejects that advice and makes a decision. And if a Cabinet officer, any Cabinet officer, feels so strongly about his advice not being taken, he can resign. So I think it was a huge mistake to get out in front of President Trump on this issue. But the second thing is President Trump never said, I'm going to invoke invoke the Insurrection Act. What did he say? He said, if the governors and the mayors don't get their act together and to protect their people, then I have an option. I could do that. There's a lot of difference between saying, I have an option, you guys get your act together, than saying, I'm about to send the Marines into Minneapolis. Yes, and if uh, indeed these uh, uh, Democratic-run cities were to continue uh, their decision, uh, of uh, strategic patience and to withhold uh, enforcement of the law and maintenance of order in those cities, uh, the American people would be screaming at this president to bring in the, uh, to use the Insurrection Act because, in point of fact, mm -hmm. this has been over the course of 10 days, uh, I mean, at various points, it looked like it was rising to that level because some of these governors, some of these mayors, many of them, I should say, uh, were behaving unconscionably uh, in all of it, just abject disregard for property rights, the lives of their citizens. You know, it, politically, they're being fools about this. Go back and look at 1968. In 1968, there was unrest throughout American cities after Martin Luther King was assassinated and Bobby Kennedy well. was assassinated. Well, you and I are both of the age where we do. Well, what happened at the Democratic Convention in Chicago in 1968 in the summer, there was such massive violence in the streets that it only served to do one thing. It elected Richard Nixon president because he was perceived as the law and order president, the guy who was going to get America safe again. It was not an accident that when Donald Trump spoke the other night, he said, I'm your law and order president. If you're going to trust anybody to keep law and order, Donald Trump's the guy, not some mayors and governors who seem to be throwing up their hands every time a brickbat goes through a, a glass window and looters jump in.